This episode of Monster Cafe contains misogyny left mostly uncontested and ableist slurs. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back to Monster Cafe, Classic Edition. I'm Paul, the keeper for our return to the original Van Helmen's family back in 1897. Returning to the table, I have several hunters from the first edition Van Helmen's. Let's go around the table, remind the audience who our players, their hunters, and their playbooks are. Hi, I'm Nick, or Kilnos if I've had that channel up by now. I'm playing Jason Von Hellmans, a, a big blue devil with long black horns and a rocky right hand who was adopted by our very own Dr. Tepperance. Hello, I am Izzy. I am playing Ariana Quell Hellmans, the wronged. She's a girl with an enormous battle axe looking for revenge. I guess it's my turn. I am Justin, and uh, I am playing Oscar Van Helmans, the one who everything was based on very loosely, very, very loosely. Actually, Dracula and I, we go back a long way. Hey, everyone. I'm Steph, and for this edition of the Monster Cafe, I'm playing Dr. Temperance Vigilance Frankenstein Van Helmans IV, because, you know... Sometimes people just need to call you by a nickname like Doc or Temperance or Hey You. And my playbook this time around is the Action Scientist because who doesn't love a completely coked up mad scientist from these early Victorian days? Also, I invented Cheese Whiz, apparently. I completely forgot about that since the last time we played. And it hit me like a truck because my notes are just the various medication and then Cheese Whiz. You also apparently are the originator of the grilled cheese. And the RV. I'm just that good. And a gun. Or no, a laser gun. Yes, you invented the laser. Someone else beat you to inventing the gun so far, we believe. Maybe. That's fine, that's fine. They can have the gun. I have the laser, which will eventually be used to make the perfect grilled cheese. Absolutely. So last time... Ari Van Helman stayed back at the estate to keep an eye on Oscar, the patriarch of the family, while he experienced some stomach problems and was locked in the restroom. Meanwhile, Jason and the Doc made their way to downtown London to meet the Doc's drug dealer, Winston Churchill, for a lead on some Phoenix tears because they realized the missing prophet they were seeking was Medusa, who have, may have reverted into her cursed Gorgon form and gone mad as a result. No sooner did they procure the Phoenix tears by uh, the Doc making out with Winston Churchill, they realized Winston was starting to turn to stone. Two hunters ran out of the drug den only to see a glimpse of their proto RV booking it around a corner, long gone, and having been stolen by who they can only assume to be Medusa disguised as a little old blind lady. Our story resumes with Jason and the good doctor having seen their RV spirited away. What do you do? You know, you know what I should invent next? What? Anti theft devices. That would be smart. We don't have locks on that thing? No. I didn't think anyone else had a driver's license. <laughs> if you want, you can roll to see if you invented OnStar so you can lowjack the thing. <laughs> I want to see if I can invent OnStar lowjack. Doc, go ahead and see if you have, I'm going to say limited London, like you put a GPS transponder on Big Ben satellites haven't been invented yet. Yeah, Big Ben is your satellite transceiver, so you, anywhere in the greater London area, if you successfully roll at least a mixed success on this, you'll be able to track down the RV. Okay. Come on. Oh! Whoo. Okay, so that was a five. Aww. Oh. So, uh, you're just gonna see the doc. She pulls this this little doohickey out of her, out of some fold of her dress. Looks at it. Oh, I I forgot to put batteries in it. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> That's great. There are batteries? <laughs> yeah, I invented them last week. <laughs> yeah, it works great. You get a tardigrade, you hook it up to some electricity, and it's great. It thinks it's in a spa day. It's no longer infernal magic it, by batteries. I mean, once upon a time, is... batteries were considered infernal, so. <laughs> True. True. It, it's fine, because temperance, you realize you have batteries in the in the estate, and then once you pop them in, you can track down the RV. You just need to find a way home. So we just start huffing it. Huffing it? 
Yeah, that's yes. walking. Look, when is Dr. Temperance Vigilance Frankenstein Van Helmens the fourth not huffing it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you two resign yourselves to walking home. And we're going to jump back to Ari and Oscar. I think I'm good now. I, I, I feel like, uh, was that a spatial anomaly that you were talking about with the, the swirling and the pulling and the gravity, something about a hole? Uh, yes, a black hole. Yes, yes, I feel like the other end of one of those right now. I... I'll have to ask the doctor if there is another end. Are you sure you got it all out? You said that the last seven times. Uh, the water in the bowl is very cold. You might ask my entrails that are dangling behind me if you want to see them, uh, if, if the water is, is temperate or not. I... I will simply take your word it for this. It looks like I'm making butt sausage. Hmm. Wonderful. There's a knock at your door as you all are talking about Oscar's various digestive problems. Oh, I'll go get it. You clean up. I'll just tuck this back in. Yes, please do. Uh, and Ari will go answer the door. It is Cassandra. Hello. I got the impression that Oscar might need some assistance. It's it's you, I believe. Um, yes, I know where Temperance put her uh, art, an artifice she invented called Alka Seltzer for your stomach. Alcoholic seltzer. You know, I think that might be where she was going with it, but not where she oh. wound up. Fine, fine. This doesn't mean that you know anything about the future, though. You still have yet to prove that to me. Cassandra walks through the doc's lab like she owns the place fishes through a drawer, and finds some antacids for your stomach. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's just, uh, pop these in, right? Okay. As I unbuckle my pants and bend a little bit. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, this is not a suppository. You you actually take it orally by dropping in some water. Oh. No, but this one's a suppository. It reaches into another Oh. Drawer. That is not a suppository. We're going to have to uh, talk to, to our friend about that. Mm, yes. Dear Lord, puts most men to shame. Anyway, uh, what, what brings you here? I came to see because, as we, went, we discussed last time, I can't actually see anything related to my sister with my sight because it's against the rules of being a seer. How your investigation was going? Rules, schmools. Uh, we're doing swimmingly. We... It's within our grasp. We're just having to tie up some loose bowels. Ends. Loose ends. At that point, your, uh, your butler pops in like, uh, we just got a phone call from Temperance and Jason. Apparently they lost the RV. They lost the RV? How do they lose something that's one of a kind and huge? I guess you forget to treasure it. <laughs> yeah, stolen? Uh, I, I think... What do you mean you left the keys in the RV? Oh, dear. Now that one I can understand. How, how else are you going to know where they are? If only we had an infernal tracking device. Anyway, they'll be here in like 20 minutes. They're just, they uh, just stopped their payphone uh, down the street to let us know in advance. Hmm. Very kind of them. Cassandra, you you may leave. You don't need any additional assistance or information? You just... What, you'll be fine? Oh, I, I doubted you had any to give in the first place. I believe... Well, I actually realized I forgot to. Oh, you forgot. You for How convenient you forgot. Well, you see, I was so distracted by you making fun of me earlier, I forgot to mention my sister is Medusa. I hate you. I hate you with a boundless depth. Yeah, so, like, there's a chance she might have succumbed to her curse again, that's why I can't find her? Not sure. So if you see anything like moving statues or snakes, that's her. Probably. Mm-hmm. And, and you didn't think to tell anybody before just now? Well, what happened was I was going to tell you, but then Oscar kept talking about how bad a seer I was, and it really got on my nerves, so I got distracted and forgot. Oh, it was all my fault. Convenient. <sighs> okay. I... All right. Oh, but I, I do know where you can get, find your RV, though. I do have a, I have a ping on your RV on my site. Oh. Where is it, then? It's in this industrial neighborhood in London. It's called 
Oh, that's a very problematic name. They're not going to like that name in a hundred years. Uh, Cripplegate. You're making that up. All right. We will go to this ableist establishment and find our research vehicle. RV for short. All right, well, I will swing her by later and see how you're doing. Don't die now, dears. And she walks away. And as she walks away, uh, that is when Jason and Temperance arrive. You would think that being a seer, she would know if we were going to die in this or not. I think she was being facetious. I think she knows one of us is going to die. Well, I don't know what facetious means, so... All right. Jason and Temperance, you may re-enter the scene now. See, I told you the donuts are so worth it. (sighs) Wait, you got donuts? Yeah. Did you bring any? Oh, yeah, yeah, I totally did. Except I ate them on the way. I tried. So how many pot brownie donuts did Temperance just eat in the recommended <laughs> doses maximum to? Temperance has the liver that could be replaced by an iron lung. Shut up, liver, you're all right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, besides the fact that particular drug does not affect your liver and the iron lung does not replace a liver. I think there's a it's hint fine. in the name. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, the heart, obviously. Obviously, the heart. I can only imagine the walk back while Temperance was just zoinked out of her mind. <laughs> and Jason's just here, like, keeping her away from other things. It's okay. Jason also invented something. It's the child leash. <laughs> he just puts it every time you choose Joey. Oh my god, I love that. You walk into traffic, yank. You walk into another <laughs> shop, yank. Yank, we gotta go. <laughs> Come on. It's a metaphor for the human condition. <laughs> oh god. How are you like this? It's a side effect. <laughs> you never even took poli <laughs> I did. You just thought I was a guy because it was a poli sci class and you didn't think women could be there. Bravo. I was a top student. Bravo. Alright, so you know where Medusa is, and once Temperance comes down from this particularly high up high, she can use her alchemy skills to make a cure for petrification using the Phoenix Tears. Right, Larry! I forgot about him! Yes, Larry and also Winston Churchill. Right, Winston Churchill. He might be important later. He maybe he might accidentally do a reverse like peace sign at some people. We're going to burn them on the beaches. We're going to blitz them in the creeks. We're going to smoke their spleefs wherever we may go. Might need to touch up that speech. If any of you get blasted with the petrification ray, it will also help cure you. Oh, well then, yes, by all means, go ahead. Temperance, we're act under pressure to see how long it takes you to come down from this high. What are you talking about? I can absolutely do this while slitched out of my mind. This helps, actually. But also, I am never coming down from this high. I roll this six. Woo! Yeah, so, so it takes several hours, but you eventually come down. Mark experience. I did. Now. Or if you want to roll while you're high out of your mind, you can just have minus one moving forward to doing science. I'm trying to make him this tilt with this cure. Well, it's fine. I rolled a nine. All right. So did you give yourself a minus one or is it actually an eight? Nothing that matters. That was, uh, that was with the minus one. I had a ten and then I did. Okay, cool. One. Yeah, so it takes you like an hour and you have four doses. One for Winston Churchill, one for Larry, and two for you guys. All right. So make sure no more than two of you get hit by Medusa's stare. Well, that's going to be hard. It's fine. As long as Winston Churchill has it up the butt with this medication, then we'll be able to get more Phoenix Feathers. It's fine. No, because he gave you his supply. <laughs> we'll have to go find another one. Until then, you're going to be a very nice topiary in the garden. Now, you actually know that you need to apply the cure before they fully are petrified or it's too late. Jason, may I suggest when we get into the room with the Gorgon that we do this above board 
you challenge her to a staring contest. First one to blink loses. And while you two are engaged in that, we can hack her into several pieces. Uh... I don't hear a no. I, I don't. I now know exactly which Van Helmen's Eddie actually takes after now. How exactly would that work? Would I just turn into a statue as well? Ah, yes, you would. However, you wouldn't blink, so she would be very distracted. Her eyes would be burning, and she wouldn't be able to do anything with uh, us as far as petrification. I mean, it's an option. In the spirit of love and family and invention, I reach out my hand to my lovely Miss Frankenstein. And I say, I am going to invent a saying. Take one for the team. Oh, God. Take one or what? Take a Gorgon a staring contest for the team in this case. Uh, that seems really specific. Yes. It, it very much is. Absolutely. This is the only time it's ever going to come up. I'm sure of it. I think that's an option. However, we should be looking at other things. Like, do we have any big mirrors? You know that Cripplegate is a industrial district full of factories and warehouses. You are relatively certain there's probably one full of glassware, including mirrors, somewhere near where she is, if you want to go get some. That's also an option. Is this a shopping episode? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, shopping. Monster Cafe shopping episode. <laughs> Only mirrors, though. Only <laughs> mirrors. <laughs> and you go to the, you go to the warehouse. And there's conveniently four mirrors shaped exactly like like medieval shields. Oh, that's Weird. very convenient. Oh, wonderful. How about like big uh, big mirror suits where we could just wear them? Uh, disco ball outfit if we could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that, no, you're in the 1890s, not the 1970s. I'm sorry. We also have laser weapons, to be fair. No, but like that's something Temperance invented. They don't just conveniently have a disco ball. Temperance, in the 1890s do you, in the can you make mirror suits? Temperance, I take back all the misogynistic things. You are valuable. You are worthy. You are phenomenal. You are more intelligent than any man on earth. Will you make us? A mirror suit. Temperance looks at, at Oscar and then the, the weed brownie she was eating and then at Oscar is like, I think I had too much. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's the thing that makes you think that? <laughs> that's <laughs> what does it. That crosses the line. <laughs> that crosses the line? <laughs> I, I'm astounded. I'm... I have said some pretty misogynistic things in this game. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are asking Temperance to basically invent bedazzling and or sequins for this purpose. Yes. I could just stick a bunch of lasers inside the, the, the lighthouse glass, stick one of us in it, and then you just fire it, and then pff, all over the place. All right, here's what we can do. But I will try and if yeah. she cannot do this, what we need to do is find a small, hungry child. Okay? Are you sticking with me on this? Dress him in a suit that is all lances, like large, sticky, pokey things all over his body, and throw a ham sandwich in there and say, go get it, child! And <laughs> it will probably <laughs> take care of it himself. Oh, good. There's a lot of starving children in this place, so we we could just Is find- Is that why we call them urchins? Yes, yes, because that's how I cleared out that nest of vampires, don't you know? Right, because urchins are all spiny, and so if you put a bunch of spines on the child, they become an urchin. Absolutely. I... I... You can never have more than one dressed at a time, though, because if you have more than one dressed at a time and there's only one sandwich, they fight to the death. I'm going to attempt to finagle a mirror suit. No, I'm going to draw the line okay. at you building glass armor on the fly. That's not science. That is a very peculiar amount of smithery. Well, we are a very peculiar amount of people. Like, like 
I, I'm okay with you turning, like, middle-sized mirrors into shields and tower shields. Okay. That is just a little bit of improvisation. No, you don't get to just wear a mirror. Fair, fair. Fine. <sighs> Urchins it is. Also, I want to point out the fatal flaw where any of her statues punch you. You now have a bunch of broken glass over your Yeah, body but we don't talk about that. We see the cool things about the play of- Why you wear the we padding? We see the flaws. <laughs> Obviously, none of you lived through the 70s like I did. Everything was very well padded. 1870s? Yes. So ironically, the bicycle helmets. Yeah, no bicycle helmets. Everything but the kid's head. You know, the 90s, that was when they were really bad. They had the soccer boppers, you had the pool floaties. Everything in the 1990s was well padded. You also had lawn darts in the 70s, so... Yeah. Ooh, we could do mirrored lawn darts! <laughs> <laughs> Why do they need to be mirrored? I don't know, I thought that was the theme. At that point, just throw regular darts at <laughs> lawn her. Lawn darts! We go get mirrors. Instead of one of us sacrificing ourselves, that's the last option. But it's what you must do when the time comes. We must all agree on that. Yes, if we must. Some of you may die. <laughs> okay, so if it comes to it, I'm supposed to have a staring contest. So she pulls her goggles down, which are mirrored. Nice. That could work. That could work. Uh, Steph, I want you to just roll, like raw luck, just 2d6, two two to see whether or not you have enough goggles for everybody. Help. 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 Yeah, yes, yeah, so you can roll the help action. You may have helped her have more than one pair of mirrored goggles. That's a seven. Next success. You'll be in worse position, so it, if she succeeds, she has enough for everybody but you. Fine by me. Alright, Steph, roll 2d6 and add plus one. I want to burn a luck point. Yes, you conveniently have enough for everybody. I will say that th that Nick does not take the penalty for helping you out because you spent a luck and that would be mean. You all now have badass aviator sunglasses, steampunk style, to wear over your eyes. Ladies, I have a question for you. Do you have a little compact mirror, by chance? I look at Ari, who is the only one who's even halfway presentable at any point in time. No, I don't have a compact mirror. As if Temperance wouldn't have a compact mirror just because she laced the talcum powder in the mirror with something incredibly painful to take as a drug. Like, like there's definitely like opium powder or some shit in a compact mirror you're carrying around so you can casually do drugs. Oh, you you don't want the makeup mirror. You want the cocaine mirror. Okay, yeah, one yes, second. Yes, please. I open up my cocaine mirror, just kind of wipe the cocaine off the little mirror that's in there. That, that is so much. It's spilling out the side. How did you get that much in there? <laughs> I use a new technology called just packing that shit in. The best technology. The compact of holding. Exactly. I'm going to call it compacting. Yeah. Uh, it's a compact mirror. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> So you have mirrors of varying sizes. You have two doses of Phoenix Cures in case someone somehow still gets zapped. Do you have anything else? A shit ton of cocaine. Just an okay. ass load of is it. Your, just... Is your plan to just get reduced a really high? <laughs> <laughs> if it works. Hang on, I'm Googling something right quick. Can cocaine kill snakes? We're either going to have cocaine bear, <laughs> or... or are we going to have... <laughs> It turns out that we would have cocaine bear, but with snakes. I googled it. Cocaine snakes. Snakes on cocaine. Temperance has the uh, the schematics for plane, and she's getting ready to, to correspond with these people she's heard of called the Wright Brothers. You would give our plans for air travel to Yankees. The Americans. You have no idea how good their weed is. Yes, their tobacco plantations, yes. <laughs> Mm. No, I meant just the straight poppy seed. You guys, make your way to Cripplegate. As we walk. 
as you walk. Was there a second half to that sentence? No, no. Just ask what you want. Cool. All right. All right. So you eventually get there and you get to this. There's this warehouse in pretty much the exact center of the district. It's the abandoned warehouse, of course. Yeah, this is actually when that trope started, the abandoned warehouse trope. We're setting all sorts of firsts. You see several torches lit around the building. And you see infernal imagery, different circles of pentagrams in them and such and sort. And you see a fuck ton of statues littered around. This was like a wax, this like, look, you get the impression that she robbed a wax museum or some shit. Cause there's just lawn gnomes, little statues of squirrels, the weeping angels, all this shit just acting as sentinels. They have not all seen you yet. All right, family, huddle close to me. I have a plan. Now, there are a lot of torches all around here. And this building is made of wood. If we can bar all the doors and windows and just set the thing on fire, I think we should be good. This may be the number one monster killer that we we can do. I mean, it's the easiest. It's obviously right there, right there to do. It's just, it's like the gods shone down upon us and said, hey, set those bastards on fire. Yeah, and if we buy the place, we can get fire insurance. I think we have to buy it before we set it on fire. It's good thought, though. Good thought. Maybe we, maybe in the future. Also, we gotta make sure we are seed burning a place down. True, true. Can I look around? We had a bad situation. Aw. That's not a bad situation. It is contextually the better move than investigate a mystery, because you have the answers to the things you seek. That's true. So, rolling, I got a two. So, Mark, experience, you know nothing. I know you absolutely see nothing. I get to take a hard move. I think that's the best experience I've had. Before I take my hard move, where do you all think you are? Are you, like, on the roof of the mirror store, checking this place out? Are you, like, leaving the mirror store? Are you, like, just at a street corner staring at this warehouse? Like, please, place yourself in space so I know how to take a hard move against you. I would say that being monster hunters, we would probably know enough to try to sneak around in the shadows, probably in the back. All right, so you circle around to the dark street corner behind the warehouse. You look up. One of those angels is right fucking behind you. Everyone roll a d6. Whoever rolls the lowest is going to be the one that gets bitch slapped by the angel. Oh, oh. Actually, it'd be better if it was me. Uh, I got four. I got a one. Oh, I am no. not using this auto roller anymore, but thank God it wasn't me. I got a two. I got a three. Oh, hey, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Oscar, this angel smacks you, but it only does one harm. However, it shatters every single mirror you're wearing. It just bitch slaps you that hard into a wall. You have no mirrors. Can I punch it? You absolutely can. Roll kicks some ass. Eight. Uh, eight is a mixed success, so you punch the angel, the angel punches you. Once again, it likes to shatter your mirror, and you only take one harm. Fuck. Uh, I have armor, so that goes down to zero, right? That That is fine. It was mostly here to break your mirrors. To be clear, they don't disappear into the ether. We have fragments, correct? The, the mirrors? Uh, yeah, no, they, they are not turned into a fine glass powder. However, they, you just have shards. Ooh. And the, the angel is broken. We could possibly use the bigger shards. Anyone but Jason trying to handle these things might cause actual harm to themselves. Jason canonically has hands made of stone. I've said it once, I'll say it again. You have proctologist fingers. You should look into that. Thank you. I will. Once we figure this stuff out. Uh, I'll, I'm just going to try and grab all the like bigger shards. Maybe that those could be useful. Just weld them together with the laser back into a sort of a mirror. What do we want to use the glass shards for? Do we... Like, we could just laser cut them into a sword. Or... We can crush them to a fine powder. And snort them? Oh! Oh, I need to find a new family. <laughs> Don't... Th that this is the first time I've ever talked about snorting something, to be fair. I think he has a problem. <laughs> no! We now have to do an intervention. We have to do an intervention right now. <laughs> We're gonna have to do a detox. Oh god. 
It's okay, we love you very much. And we just want the best for you, sweetie. Also, give me just one second, and I, I'm going to use my Doors of Perception thingy, which gives a hunter, including yourself, a plus one rating for the remainder of the mystery. So, I'm going to just put a arm around my darling, darling adopted son, and I'm just going to be like, Okay, if you're going to snort something, here's what you do, and I open my compact, I pull out the little thing, stick it up his nose, Oh, okay, oh God. now breathe really deep. <laughs> That's a good boy. Now we don't inhale glass or borax or anything that's not straight cocaine. We're rich, we can afford it. And now you have plus one to kick some ass because you've got a lot of cocaine in your system now. Oh my well, God, Jason's the cocaine bear. <laughs> Well, that surprisingly felt very good. Right? See, that's the correct way to do drugs. I wait for Temperance to leave. I go, go next to Ari. Please help me. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's alright. It'll wear off in about two to three days. Don't worry. My my eye, my eyes are like all bloodshot already. How how am I also energized already? I'm shaking, like, his hands are shaking. The doctor has some really, um, some would say it powerful. I would say, uh, fucked up drugs. <laughs> <laughs> you all look at the warehouse, you see that all the torches that were lit everywhere, the uh, flames on them have grown to about two times the normal height. Like, like, not like, oh, they're spreading, but like, it's like something's amplifying them. You get the impression there's some sort of occult ritual going on in this warehouse going to get worse the longer you ignore it. Well, that's not good. It's a, f a sign from above that we should just burn the whole place down. I think that will just be fighting fire with fire. Maybe we should have a more elegant solution. At this point, literally, probably. What is more elegant than the orange-red flames licking themselves across the flammable surfaces, hugging them tightly, caressing them until they're nothing but ash? What is more elegant than that? You have a problem. If you could put like half the effort you put into drugs and poetry into monster hunting, this would have been over already. We might be effective. Might be. Since this is all going, how, how would you put it, dear? Ass over tea kettle. I will say, don't worry, I'll check it out and I will scout ahead. The don't worry, I'll check it out is a move. Wherever I go off by myself, I check out somewhere or something scary. And I mark experience. All right, you do that. Let's roll to in, to read a bad situation again. Oh, ooh, ooh, okay. I'll give you plus one because you're using a move related to going off and looking for something yourself. All right. I got a 10. All right, with a 10, you get to ask two questions, or I should say you get to hold two. What's the best way in? What's the best way out? Are there any dangers we haven't noticed? What is the biggest threat? What is most vulnerable to me? What's the best way to protect the victims? Hmm. I don't think there's too much in the way of saving the victims if they're all already stoned because we're just going to crush them during the fight. Ah, uh, what is the best way in? All right, so you see most of the ground level entrances are pretty much full. You do see some like a fire escape up on the side of the building that has a open window. You get the impression you could get there from an adjacent building with the right, with either some combination of acrobatics or the doc probably having invented a, like a hook gun or some shit. Jason, throw me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> pick him up. You, you, before you do that, you, you do have one more hold if you'd like to ask a question first. Am I going to survive this? <laughs> <laughs> I will hold on to that question uh, once I reach the window, if I can reach the window. Okay. That's fine. Just wanted to make sure you didn't forget you had it. Oh, okay. You want me to throw it you at the window? Throw me up Not to... Not just at the wall. Up, up to the window. Gently okay. up to the window, please. Cool. I fastball special towards the window. 
All right, unless you have a more relevant move, roll to act under pressure to throw Oscar up there. If you get a mixed success, Oscar's going to be injured from the landing because you threw him too hard. That's a nine. No, 10, sorry. Okay, 10 is a full success. You exactly fastball special Oscar up so that Oscar can land on the thing. Oscar, roll to act under pressure to try and land on your feet. I'll give you plus one because because Jason exactly lays the needle for you to land where you need to be. I had some doubts as soon as he started lobbing me through the air. I rolled with the plus one a five. Uh, so go ahead and mark experience. I you hate land experience. on the fire escape with a audible thud. Oh! And uh. you all like blink and realize that every single statue is now looking up where Oscar is in the fire escape. You think you're made. If you're enjoying this and want to play yourself, head on over to evilhat.com and pick up a copy of Monster of the Week. When you do, enter code BARDROCK10 and get 10% off your entire purchase. And if you liked us, then here's a trailer for another BARDROCK Network show. Where are we now, Llewellyn? Well, Meanie, it looks like we've arrived in a universe where Jump Leads is part of the Bard Rock Network of Podcasts. The Bard Rock Network? Wow! That's a whole new audience ready to experience our adventures jumping through parallel universes, like when we found that colony of religious robots, or or, or, or the time we were chased by a knife-wielding dinosaur. What about when you spent a whole episode looking for a bathroom? We don't have to talk about that. Listen to the scripted sci-fi comedy podcast audiences are calling hilarious with a lot of heart and wit. Jump Leads, season one available now, wherever you get your podcasts. Season two, coming soon. Who was that? Uh, sounds like this reality is actually an ad spot. An ad spot? Wait, so none of this is canon? It was, until you asked that question. This could have gone better. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, I landed on something. But none of them have immediate access to the fire escape, so Oscar, before before shit goes south, you do have the ability to look in the window and use your other hold. My other question was, could I determine where the Gorgon is? As you look in the window, you see she is in the center of the warehouse in the middle of a big-ass pentagram. Uh, she seems to be doing some sort of chanting motion, and uh, you can see, like, it's centered to, like, there's, like, glass roof, like a sunroof thing in the middle of the warehouse, and it's letting in the moonlight, and she seems to be channeling it. You see that surrounding her pentagram are eight other pentagrams, each with a human being tied to them on some sort of stake for some sort of sacrificial ceremony. There are eight victims, potentially, that you should be trying to protect. She's having an orgy. We need to stop it. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say, contextually, you basically use the question, what's the biggest threat, which is Medusa. All right. I try to convey that as best as I can. I mean, there's no point in trying for self anymore. You could just yell it because everyone is going to be fucked now because everyone else is on the ground level with those statues. I didn't say I'd do it stealthily. I scream my head off. I am not at all brave. <sighs> yeah, so... You guys have a second here. You're about to be bum rushed by statues. What do you do in anticipation of that? Is there a carriage nearby? You're in an industrial district. There is a commercial sized dumpster right there. Okay, I would like to pick that up and throw it at as many of them as possible. All right, now that you have a that special move for that, right? Yes, mayhem. When I grab a nearby large object and use it as an improvised weapon, the first term in the guidelines. Dumpster is for harm? Yeah, okay. We're kicking some ass, it sounds like. Yeah, I will kick some ass, and yeah, I just throw it. Okay, cool. So you, you just incredible hulk this dumpster at the wave of approaching statues, who do move literally in the blink of an eye, but they're basically jump cutting over to you like in little bursts. So roll to kick some ass. Uh, that is also a 10. Yeah, with the ten you obliterate these things. You do get to add to uh, you do get to hold one and do apply it to your thing. I, I get to pick two because I got a ten. Okay, cool. So you get these choices. I'm mean, for the audience to read them off. 
Uh, advantage, take plus one forward, give plus one forward to another hunter. Inflict terrible harm. I'm gonna say you know four harm's gonna fuck up every single statue that was in range of this dumpster, which is probably gonna hit a lot of statues. You probably don't need that one. Suffer less harm, which you will probably get something's gonna uppercut you because they are fucking fast. Or you force them where you want them. Do you want to like clear a path to everyone who can get to the warehouse? That would be a good choice for one of them. Yes. And then I guess I'll give plus one to Ari. All right, so I will go ahead and say one of those little fucking squirrel statues from someone's front yard just is a little too short for the dumpster to have hit them. They scoot up and they bite you in the ankle for oh, come one on. harm after your armor. <laughs> uh oh, the armor. Yeah, cuz like yeah, like this this thing just found like a nice soft spot on your ankle and chomped it. Damn. And for the sake well, of your armor not trivializing it, I'm make, minimizing it in one harm. <laughs> okay. Because it is yeah, it's two armor, but yeah. Yeah, like, no, this thing just... Because, again, it, it's, like, basically moving super fucking fast. It got fast my Achilles. Like, yeah, exactly. Okay. And then, like, you just kick it off, and it's gone. It's shattered, or flies off in the distance like Goofy. Like, Team Rocket blasting away. It's a squirrel. <laughs> it's not that hard. Okay. His one weak spot. He's dead now. Who knew that Devil's Achilles were their weak spot? Ari and Temperance, you now have a chance. There's been a path cleared for you. What do you each do? Ari is going to... She she took the, like, tower shield version of the of the mirror shield. She is just going to put that in front of her and just run straight forward into the place. All right, you book it into the warehouse. Medusa is in the center of these pentagrams. She looks up. I'm going to go ahead and give you plus one to act under pressure to not get her gaze using the mirror to deflect it. Oh, that's a 12. All right, the 12, you angle it so that Medusa gets a glimpse of her thing, but you are too far away as she lands the gaze. So she likes to like, kind of like shudders back. Like you got, you definitely got her. She starts petrifying, but she shakes it off because it's like instant petrification is like she's within five feet of you in like the myth. Like she doesn't usually petrify people from 30 feet away, but you you can get closer as she definitely did not get you with the gaze and start petrifying you. Oh, abs- Ari is is not stopping. She is like barreling towards her. You see a bunch of snakes circling around on the ground trying to grapple you. Roll it act under pressure to avoid being grappled by the snakes. You still have your plus one moving forward. It's going to last for a little bit. All right. Well, that's that's a five. Yeah, so uh, some snakes trip you up, you fall on the ground. I'll let the mirror, like, kind of break in half, not break, break and shatter. And the two pieces kind of scatter on the ground away from you. You are on the ground. Fortunately, Temperance is right behind you. Temperance, what do you do? Okay, so... Ari just fell flat on the ground, and we've got Medusa up there. I would like to do a weird science-y thing where I don't look at Medusa since apparently the ground's covered in shattered glass. I want to bounce my lasers off of it and hit her, but before I do that, I'm going to look down and kind of put my goggles up so the goggles are reflecting and looking at her eyes, but I'm firing a laser and bouncing it off of those uh, mirrors. All right, so you're basically shooting at one of the big mirror pieces that Ari just dropped. Exactly. You said you're invoking one of your weird science moves. Are you just doing a really cool kick some ass by ricocheting it off a mirror? Yeah, that probably would be more of a two-fisted science kind of thing. I'm using the properties of mirrors. Or you you may roll plus sharp to kick some ass instead of tough. I'm firing off of all of those uh, lasers on the ground while she's looking at my goggles. She invents the procedure. It's a laser eye procedure. (laughs) procedure. Yes. So I perform the equivalent of Victorian LASIK for a mixed success at nine. All right, so what happens is you fire off the beam. It reflects off the mirror. It does it does partially get her, like, wings Medusa, and she's going to take some harm. But the way that this works when in terms of, like, you getting harm, your laser, because you hit a broken mirror, fragments into a couple beams, and it starts, it sets the warehouse on fire. Good, we got the plant started. Well, and one of the one of the beams that it happens to cut through is is kind of weak and rotted and falls on you. You're gonna take two harm. 
Everything is going to plan. <laughs> As a beam just collapses and whacks you in the back and knocks you out of your ass. There are still eight hostages in this now burning building. Oh, that's right. Oscar, you are now up. What do you want to do? I just have a general firearm. <laughs> like, I've got a revolver. I mean, there there are eight people you could untie. There are, but I'm still up, up on the uh, fire escape. So I'm going to try to put all... Uh, well, I only have six bullets, so I'm going to put six of them out of their misery. At... <laughs> <laughs> You poor souls! <laughs> Nothing can be done for you now. No. I'm so sorry. Look at the flowers. Yes, I, I would like to try to get Medusa's uh, attention by shooting directly at her. I mean, who needs lasers and, and you know, fist of the devil and or devil fisting, however you want to look at it. <laughs> so let's let's just try to shoot her and see what happens. If anything, it'll be a good distraction. All right, go ahead and roll kick some ass. So I scream loudly, and I start firing in rapid succession, which, if you know anything about firing an act actual six-shooter, it's very hard to be accurate while firing quickly. I got a five. You do not do anything to Medusa. You shoot up more of the, of the warehouse, which is crumbling fast as rapidly as... Because five different laser beams basically came off that mirror and set it on fire. You basically just, not, like, you knock over some of these oil lanterns, and now the fire is spreading faster. Perfectly according to plan. So you realize one of the statues has climbed up the fire escape behind you, and it just hammers you, and you go flying off of the railing down to the first floor. You're going to take three harm, from one from the angel punching you, two from landing on your ass on the ground, on top of some broken glass. Oh no. He's already dead there. Patriarch is hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and at now that three of the four Van Helmans hunters are flat on their asses, Jason, you now arrive at the warehouse, having run behind the dumpster you threw. What the fuck? Hi, sweetie. I've got a log on me. Yeah. Oh, this is not a good situation. You could always pick someone up and then throw them, because you did so well. <laughs> <laughs> so, laying out the scene, there's a Something, uh, there's a statue on Temperance. Oscar just fell on his ass. Ari is down with a half-broken mirror. Well, it's actually like a support beam on, te on Temperance, like a piece of... Okay, beam. not... Okay. I thought it was a statue. Yeah, no, just like a really big, heavy piece of wood. Okay. That is a little on fire, not super on fire yet. And then there are... Six? Eight? Eight hostages. Basically, imagine, like... That the entire warehouse is a is a ticker ta tic tac toe square. Yes. This is in the center, and each of the squares around her has a matching pentagram that has a victim inside of it. And I'm assuming Temperance is the one closest to me. I'm assuming. Like I feel like her and Oscar are probably about the same. Ari made it the furthest into yeah. the warehouse. Not so much trying to help Temperance out. I'm going to try and just take the support beam off her so she could get up. And then, are the victim's hands, like, tallied above their heads or something like that? Like, rope or something? Yes, very satanic ritual. Can I try and shoot one of the ropes towards, uh, like, one of the victim's ropes to get them out? Are you trying to shoot, like, with your gun? Yes, with my gun. I feel like because you're distinctly interacting with the support beam, you can do an action attached to the support beam. Like, if you were like, oh, I pick up this big heavy thing and throw it at Medusa, okay. that would be one action. That's fair. Then can I just, yeah, can I just throw the support beam at Medusa then? Like, try and, like, push her away from the ritual? You absolutely can, and it's going to be, the support beam is heavy enough to trigger your superhuman throwing thing. Uh, I'm assuming that would be, like... It still kicks some ass. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to see what the harm would do. Uh, it'd be like three harm, probably. It's not as heavy as a dumpster. But it is on fire and a giant piece of wood. That is an 11. Yeah, with an 11, you, for, for, first of all, you, you're going to deal some harm to her. Three harm, and we'll see how the rest of it goes. But first of all, uh, kick some ass, you get two on an 11. So, uh, once again, advantage plus one four to somebody. Terrible harm, which she is the boss. 
uh, suffer less harm or force them where you want them. I feel like force you where they want them to think you're trying to knock her as far away from this ritual circle as possible. Yeah, I'm assuming that's going to be one of them. Yeah, that feels like like what you were trying to do. So yeah, she's going to go flying into the back wall, kind of in between two of those victims, and go smashing through the wall. So she's outside the building right now. And then I guess I'll... It, does it look like it's actually hurting her? Yeah, no, she looks like she's being hurt, but, like, you have to remember, like, as a mythical monster, yeah. she is fucking tough, that, so... That's why I'm, like, figuring out if I even want to do inflict harm or if so, I should just give someone help. Like, you look like she's softened up, but, like, you don't think that plus one harm is going to make the difference between her go staying down or... So I'm just going to give plus one to Oscar, I guess. All right, new round. Our, I, I will say you can all, because the things knocking you down are out, you can all stand up easy enough. So, are you get on your feet, what do you do? Just, I think just continuing to rush at Medusa, grabbing one of the glass shards, trying my best to hold it in front of me, and rushing at her. Yeah, I'll go ahead and say the handle you fixed to it is on one of the two mirror pieces that broke, so you have like a regular size shield mirror now. You go out there, she is flat on her ass, she currently does not have, you know, her eyes even open because she's stunned from Jason. Go ahead and roll to kick some ass on this this monster that is just laying flat on the ground. Go for the head! It's a six. Go you know, the six, you miss. Uh, Adusa, like, as you're swinging down, uh, she opens her eyes wide, rolls to the side of your axe, reaches up, pushes your goggles up, and looks you straight in the eye, mm. and you feel one of your legs turn to stone instantly. Mm. Like, it's not an instant kill, because that would suck. But no, you're going to need Phoenix Tears. You, you should have thought get more carefully, dearie. You suck. Outside, you just hear Oscar going, If only you had challenged her to a stare-off. <laughs> Oscar now is also slowly but surely climbing to his feet. What does oh. he want to do? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, uh, where am I? Oh, I'm still outside. <laughs> I'm still... No, no, you got knocked through the window and into the middle of the warehouse. Oh, okay. So, I will... Ah, uh, look over, I see... Yeah, they got this. I'm gonna go ahead and release the hostages and, and let them know it's Oscar Van Helmans at your service. Yes, I am responsible for everything good. Roll to act under pressure, see how many victims you can get. Okay. There are eight of them, that's a lot. There's still eight of them? I thought I shot at least six. <laughs> uh, rolling and... Uh, I got a five. A five, first of all, mark experience. You get one, and then when you're walking towards the next one, you get tripped by the snakes and you're on your ass again. So when I level up, which I think will be at the end of this round, because <laughs> I roll so badly these last three sessions, do I go Super Saiyan? Is it is that how it works? I don't think the mundane can go Super Saiyan. <laughs> That's like a Krillin situation. Ah, oh, shouldn't have played mundane. <laughs> so that is Oscar is just on his ass again. Temperance. I think since I am up, I think I'm going to go see how many of these I can get unstuck. These these poor victims that are stuck in there. Roll to act under pressure unless you have a relevant move that would otherwise help. Hmm. So they're all pretty much with their hands tied above their head? Yeah, pretty much. Huh. Would it be possible for me to just shoot the ropes with my laser? Sure, I'll give you plus one moving forward to your act, of, to your act under pressure to basically using the laser to cut them all down like a swooping beam thing that's going to make this building even more on fire. Three plus five plus two plus one. Temperance just pulls out both of her lasers, like dual wields them like like Mexican standoff style, just gets in the middle of the room and spins around shooting all the ropes out. All the victims are untied functionally and run the fuck out of here. Also, there are substantially more fire in this building now. I, I wink at Oscar and then just blow on the end of my uh, two laser pistols like Oscar's just laying there on his back he sees the wink and he just raises the thumb you got this Steph you did the thing now you have to say the catchphrase there you go 
Jason, the victims are clear, and you know Ari is on the other side of this hole you knocked in the wall, fighting Medusa by herself. I'm helping Ari. I don't know. All right. All right, so you incredible hulk through the wall. I, mean, I get the idea, like, there was a hole, but it wasn't big enough for you, so you go to the side and bust a bigger I, hole. I just Kool-Aid man right through. Oh, yeah! You see Ari has her leg petrified. Just break it off and beat her with it! <laughs> no, I'd like to keep the leg. Is the dumpster still nearby? The dumpster is like... Like, you went out the back of the warehouse, the dumpster's somewhere vaguely in the front of the warehouse. Okay, so I'm too far you away. You do see the RV. I do see the RV. Hey, Doc, do you mind? Are you able to build another RV? Yeah, I can do that. I have some design updates I want to do. What? Yeah. All right. I would like to pick up the RV. And I would just like to bonk Medusa. Yeah, the, the RV is also going to be a forearm weapon. So Can just I make a defense. Uh, on here it says buses, trucks, and walls are five harm. Would a would the RV be a bus technically? You know, it's I classify it as a, about the same size as dumpster. I think you're right. I think it is a little bigger. Sure, you can have five harm. This plus one is saving my ass. That's the benefits of taking cocaine instead of powdered glass. <laughs> uh, that's a thirteen. You clobber her. You're confident. She's unconscious. You watch her limbs go limp underneath the, the uh, RV, which shatters a million pieces. You think that only the hubcaps are salvageable. That's fine. Something salvageable. Something is good. You feel your Achilles get bitten by another by a snake this Fuck. time. <laughs> Come on. And you take another one arm after armor because there's poison coursing through your veins. Ah. Yes, Medusa is unconscious, and you can, if you want to kill her, you can, but I will remind you that you were tasked with recovering yeah, her, uh, and you yeah. know she can be cured. I am not killing her. Jason. Yes, Oscar. Lay me next to Medusa. I will have words with her as soon as she regains consciousness. I don't think you want to do that. I absolutely do. All right. I pick up Oscar and lay him next to Medusa. I assume the doc is going to use her next turn to cure Ari. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of stumble out of the clearly burning building, go up to Ari. Oh, don't worry, I got something for that. Here, op open Y. Uh... Ari tries running against cocaine, and she can't, she can't run because one of her legs is stone. If it's cocaine, at least it'll make me feel better. <laughs> Oh, the cocaine's not for making you feel less pit. That's what the morphine's for. And I drip a little bit of morphine in there. And this is for the stones. And then I just I just jab a needle into the stone work and then it turns back into flesh. Huh. That definitely would just break the needle, but I like yeah, the, the That's of. also what I was thinking. <laughs> it's okay. It uses ridiculous science nonsense. I assume you're going to bind Medusa and blindfold her if you're taking her alive. Yes, absolutely. I got an idea. Give her my goggles and then you won't see her eyes. You'll just see yours. Is that... Can you not see out of your goggles? Well, the whole thing is you gotta look into her eyes. And if you can't see her eyes because of the mirrors, it basically negates it. As much as the drunk logic sounds like it's exactly what it is, I see the logic in what Steph is saying. Yes, if you can't see Medusa's irises, you cannot look into her eyes. That, all right. Yeah, so Medusa wakes up hours later in apparently in a queen-sized bed next to Oscar <laughs> <laughs> at your guys' estate. I meant in the fiery... Never mind, I just wanted to end it all. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Your butler comes in with a newspaper that says, Great Cripple Gate Fire, because the reason I set this hunt in 1897 in November was there was a major fire in London in the Cripple Gate District. That's why the problematic district was featured, audience. Oh my god, you knew we were going to set this on fire. Oh, God. I needed to set up the Van Helmans family tradition of causing major fires. I told you, it'd be a great weapon in the future. And Cass it's like, uh, Miss Cassandra is here as well. Yes. And Cassandra walks in. Do you have Do you have anything besides potentially murdering Medusa you want to do when she wakes up, or was it just your plan to stab her when she woke up? 
Well, my, my that's a different game altogether. Uh, my actual plan was in the warehouse, but since we're both like in this large bed in our estate, uh, Jason, did you put me in my smoking jacket and nothing else? I am. Mm. I mean, I only had one health left, so I'm pretty weak. Oh, <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, you are not stable. <laughs> Don't worry, it's fine. Tempered shot you full of more cocaine and morphine. <laughs> That's what the Lord knows for. All right. Don't worry, I've invented this new thing. It's called an adrenaline pen. Anyway, here, you'll be fine. Thunk. And I have a depository. A depository or a suppository? <laughs> <laughs> I am not being here for this. I'm not being here for this. A depository, and I stick it up your ass. Oh! <laughs> I both hate you and love you at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sandra this. comes in. She sees her sister. She pulls out a salve and force feeds it to her sister, whose skin turns from green to white and hair stops being snakes and turns into blonde. There you go. She's fine now. That was easy. Well, now she's not sexy. I mean, that wasn't easy, but you know what I mean. My once petrified leg would say it was not easy. Yeah, also the RV. It's my shattered spine that I'm worried about, so... That's okay, my spine shattered too. It's fine. I have four harm that gets worse over time. Oh, yeah. How is everyone, by the way? Everyone got on their asses today. But it was fun. Yeah. I I was one away from going unstable. That That's the thing. Cassandra, we have retrieved your sister, and I must apologize. You were absolutely correct about everything, and a heartfelt apology is coming your way. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> what he means is, he's sorry. I am not sorry because I believed you. He is. You misogynistic, unrepentant devil. Hmm. Anyway, as you can see, I'm the nice one. He just looks at you. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you bringing, Daddy? <laughs> so Oscar, she hands you an envelope that says, This is the rough coordinates of a plot of land outside of what will one day be a city called Salt Lake City in Utah. Uh, and it has an oil field of petroleum. It will be worth millions. Your family will want for nothing for generations, as promised. Oh, that's great for them, but what about now? Oh, oh, fine. Let me, let me Google whether or not the lottery was the thing that existed back in 1897. Real well, quick. there were many lotteries, but not the type that you're thinking of. Yeah, there probably was one in some way. Is the draft considered a lottery? I mean, <laughs> that that As one the lottery. Yeah, that also doesn't happen for a long time, technically. The lottery was established in London, England, in 1826. She gives hey. you the name lottery numbers. Nice. I will take that because now we can probably move our whole family and operation to this uh, salty lake city and uh, begin in earnest to grow our empire and reputation while avoiding all legal authority here for what we just did. Uh, speaking of which, uh, she goes up to Jason and says, uh, my, I have this vision that you are going to be needed in the future, friend. You may have noticed you don't age as quickly as the rest of your family now that you've reached uh, full maturity. You're actually going to live for a very long time. Huh. I would like you to, around this date and time, return to this estate and uh, you're going to find uh, one of your one of your family's pr uh, uh, descendants, a Mr. Edward Van Helmans, and uh, you and he will be here when you need him when he needs you. All right, I'll I'll do that. Seems fine. Fair enough. For the sake of expediency, you interrogate Medusa and find out she was doing a ritual that was supposed to help Lucifer because when she was mad with her Gorgon status, Lucifer was doing something that was supposed to help, uh, like an army or something. Something about, like, transporting more demons. You stop that. Yeah, that makes sense. I know you have vengeance in your heart. Would you like to kill the devil? 
I would love to kill the devil. Now, the only problem is, you see, you have a mortal life, and the devil's not destined to die for about a hundred years. But I can help you out with that. And she walks you off to another area. And that's where the journal entry actually ends. Eddie, you flip to the last page of the journal. And you see a pentagram printed on a page. Oh, shit, not this again. And the pentagram lights up, and the wind swirls around you. And suddenly, Arreen Van Helmans is standing before you. Holy shit. Oh, I should hey. not have... Oh, goodness. Who the hells are you? I'm... Uh, nice to meet you. My name's Eddie Van Helmans, and uh, I... I uh, I'm an influencer on Instagram. I make, like, high-quality grilled cheeses. I also have some monsters on the side. Uh, hi, book person. Are you Ari? I'm... Yes, I am Ari. I I don't know what half of what you said is, but good that grilled cheeses are still a thing. Oh, yeah, like my great, 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 great... Great grandma, temperance, vigilance, Frankenstein, Van Helmans invented them. It's like a big part of my channel's like backstory. You know, it really ties us in into the family thing. Anyway, uh, how'd you pop out of a book? A a, a deal with uh, somebody who could see into the future. Oh yeah, that was in the book. Yeah, I, I would assume it was. Cool. Well, I was promised to kill the devil, so... Oh, sweet. You came to, like, the perfect time, because, like, I stole a rock from him when I was a kid, and now he's got it, like, out for me, and I could really use some help in that department. Well, I'm here to help. Doors open. <laughs> Hi. Whoa, you're a big guy. Thank you. Can I describe, Jason, how I'm imagining him in, like, a hundred years? Oh, bring it on. Okay. So, like, he's, like, 40? He looks like he's, like, 40-ish now. I imagine. And so, and he's been around for a while, so he has, like, a little beard growing now. That he's been growing for a couple years now. One of his horns are actually is actually like gone, not not fully gone, but like it broke in half, and he just has like all these like scars all over him. He's been working basically nonstop ever since, and he just, he he I don't know what he'd be wearing at this point. So you probably spent a few years in Seattle. You have a sleeveless lumberjack look going. Actually, yeah, probably. I can see it. Boots with the the denim, with the fur, with uh, the fur, have the pant legs rolled up. Actually, I don't hate it. So yeah, let's go with that. That's what he's wearing. I'm loving the look. We're gonna have to help Ari over here update, cause like, I'm really loving the steampunk vibes. But I gotta introduce you to some Converse man. Y yeah, uh, Ari, a, a lot's changed. I've heard there's something about uh, an instant Graham. I don't know who this Graham fellow is or why he is so quick, but... It's not a person. I... I... You... It's good to see you again, Jason. It's good to see you too. It's been a while. It has been a, a hundred years or so. For me, literally. Oh, it's like a family reunion. That's so cute. You remind me a lot of your grandmother, surprisingly. Aw, that's really sweet. Like, I appreciate that. She was a real innovator. Uh, hey boss. Uh, sorry to oh, bust yeah, up. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I, I went out and, and did the thing that you asked me to, you know, with the, you know, making sure that uh, everybody was happy and well fed and all that good stuff. And uh, uh, I, I got to tell you, I, I'm, I'm really trying to do this cooking thing here, but uh, uh, the crowds are getting a little too big for just me to handle. Oh, shit. Sorry. Yeah, everyone, me, Dot. Uh, you might notice she's a demon chicken. Hi. Wait, what? Oh, I didn't... 
Yeah, remember that rock that I stole from the devil? It had an imp in it. And this is Dot, the imp that was in the stone. That was like a happy accident. So anyway, Dot helps with the grilled cheese van. Oh, that's Adds so a sweet. Extra spice. That's so sweet whenever you give me your family nickname. Did Eddie, like, load the RV onto a plane, fly to England with it, and start selling grilled cheese outside his ancestral home? No, it's a franchise. Okay, it's a diff- It's a different food truck, got it. <laughs> Just checking whether or not you brought the family the RV on a flight to England. No, dude, we gotta go here for the franchises. All the food trucks have dot one, dot two, dot three, dot four. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. There's only the one dot, I promise. What? No, dot can be here. It's just like, I was like, wait a minute. You know, this is like a food truck. The original Van Helmans, actually, the original Van Helmans RV that was reconstructed besides the hubcaps, which are on the modern one. A replica is the food truck here. Yeah, I was trying to go for like the classic look, like off the old style RV that great, 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 great grandma invented because I thought it was like really aesthetic. I always forget how many grates there are because she's just pretty fantastic. Like, that's how the grates work, right? You just add in however many you think the person deserves. Sure, buddy. That is that is not correct, but I am one million percent sure you are the doctor's descendant. Yeah, right? I, I, I'm i seeing the very big resemblance here. All right, step over here. I got some. Uh, I got some aprons for you. I'm gonna put these on you. And here's a little hat because you know the local laws say that you have to wear this. Oh, your hun's gonna have to come off. I'm sorry, buddy. I <laughs> uh, just push you towards the griddle. Here you go. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. I feel like Jason's wearing two hats. One on each one. <laughs> <laughs> or it's just it, it's two hats on top of each other because the horns are poking out. Ah, uh, you turn the hat backwards and the horn pokes out of the little baseball cap guy. The whole thing. <laughs> All right, Dude, we got... looks so cool. We got Stabby and we got Horny. We got new employees and, uh, yeah, let's go. Monster Cafe is a Bard Rock Network production. The Keeper was Paul Kinter. Oscar Van Helmans was played by Justin Langston. Ari Van Helmans was played by Izzy. Jason Van Helmans was played by Nick. And Dr. Temperance, Vigilance, Frankenstein, Van Helmans IV was played by Steph. All their socials can be found in the show notes. Use it courtesy of Storyblocks and Epidemic Sound. If you want to talk with fans of the show, hop in our Discord server linked in the show notes. Now then, until next time. <laughs>